Hey guys, I'm Phil Town from Rule One Investing, and today I'm going to be reacting to one of my favorite investing movies, The Big Short. Although the plot primarily focuses on the housing market, it's still about business, and this is an awesome movie that investors of all levels can learn really quite a lot from. I really think this is a great education. So before we get to the clip, though, I just want to cover, you know, what exactly a housing bubble is. So a housing bubble is a kind of a temporary period of time where there's very high demand, supply is dwindling, right? People want to be buyers, they don't want to be sellers because now they've understood that prices go up and that means prices go up even more, right? You don't have any sellers, then lots of buyers, they push the price up. Now on top of that, you add lower and lower interest rates, Federal Reserve trying to keep the economy running and you get these low interest rates that are driving really kind of marginal mortgage offerings. They're trying to get mortgage originators are trying to get people to get a mortgage that wouldn't ordinarily qualify for one. And they're trying to find some clever way of making that work and really easy to access credit. So all of these things were going on in 2007 and 2008. We were experiencing a major housing bubble being driven aggressively by lower and lower interest rates and aggressive mortgage origination. Um, real estate can't go down at sort of a historical fallacy, but it was said everywhere. Um, and that triggered a major recession. So this was an epic financial collapse, by the way. I mean, we avoided a depression by the very fast actions of um, the, the Federal Reserve and the financial uh, and the financial, really the top financial people in the country acting quickly to avoid a freeze up in credit that couldn't be stopped. And they did it, which was phenomenal, really, really amazing. But it was also a bit like, uh, you know, taking some kind of huge poison to get rid of the disease you've got. You better quit taking it because otherwise you're going to die. So this was pretty epic. It's still going on today as a result of the poison we took in 2007 and 2008. And ultimately, this may result in a worse economic collapse than would have happened in 2007. But that's a game that's still being played. Let's go see where the originations of this are. This is this is cool. All right, so here we're going to play a scene where Mark Baum uh, realizes the housing bubble is in fact real, and he is in a position um, as a result of running his own fund, his own hedge fund that he could take advantage of this in a really clever way that was pitched to him by another broker. So here we go. Let's see what uh, what Mark sort of discovers out there. The market's in an itsy bitsy little gully right now. It's like everybody said, OK, that was crazy. Let's just all calm down. I sold that so house. This is a real estate agent taking Mark ago. and his team. Two years later, 480. Then to look for a house. They're just pretending they're they're buyers. This couple bought it for six fifty last year. You'd let it go for that. I don't. So it went from three fifty to six fifty in like a couple of years. And she's encouraging these guys to buy it because hey, it'll go to a million. As motivated as one can be in this neighborhood. By the way, it probably has by now gone to a million because we're back into very motivated. Oh, it's just the gully. That's all. Maybe a real estate uh, bubble. Just nerves. So where do we stand? <laughs> these guys these guys are from Wall Street where as a hedge fund manager, they're theoretically Actually, looking at value, not anybody, just prices. Anybody theoretically. Like? Yes, yes, I have someone, absolutely. Although better like me. A lot of hedge funds <laughs> bet just like this. So is a all right, so these are a couple of mortgage brokers. Us? Is that well, no, uh, no, the, the bank owns our hedge fund, but we're not really a part of it. We invest in uh, financial service companies and we're trying to understand the residential mortgage business. How many loans do you write each month? <sighs> yeah, about 60. Yeah. What was it four years ago? 10. Maybe 15. Yeah, I was a bartender. Now I own a boat. <laughs> you own a boat. So how, how many of these are uh, adjustable rate mortgages? Well, most. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'd say about 90%. Yeah. 
that the bonuses on those skyrocketed oh. a few years ago. Now, what, what that means is right that so there'll be a certain amount of time that they get the buyer uh, of this house gets these low rates. <laughs> And then it resets to whatever the higher rates will be. Okay. Even if they have no money. Well, my my firm offers uh, ninja loans. No income, no no job. You know, I just leave the income section blank if I want. Corporate doesn't care. These, these people just want homes, you know, and they, they go with the flow. Good for you. Your companies don't verify. If I write a loan on Friday afternoon, big bank is going to buy it by Monday lunch. Yeah, same here. So no point in verifying a loan because a big bank will buy it immediately. Right? They'll buy it immediately. I don't get it. All right, Why now. Are they confessing? They're not confessing. <laughs> They're bragging. <laughs> Why are they confessing to doing something completely unethical, right? But they're bragging they don't have, have to deal with it. have any idea what they are buying. I, I focus on the immigrants, you know? Once they find out they're getting home, they sign where you tell them to sign. Don't ask questions. Don't understand the rates. Fucking idiots. Yeah. And you target immigrants, too. <laughs> their, their, their credit actually isn't bad enough for him. <laughs> Look, I'm a EO guy. Okay. I make 2000 on a fixed rate prime. Right? But I can make... 10,000 on a subprime adjustment. Trust me, I'm not driving a 7 Series without strippers. No one on the pole has good credit, and they're all cash rich. I think I read Warren Buffett say something like that. No. <laughs> well, who's Warren yeah. Buffett? Okay, so strippers <laughs> like exotic dancers. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Nude, you know, topless. Strippers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you introduce us? Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Okay, look, this is Mark Baum going, go up, what? You're going to be able to refinance. And you're going to be stuck paying whatever your monthly payment is once it jumps up after your teaser rate expires. Your monthly could go up to 300%. Then he says I can always refinance. Well, he's a liar. Actually, in this particular case, James probably is wrong. Yes, you are. 100% on all my loans. What do you mean all your loans? We're talking about two loans on one house, right? Hey, there's a bubble. <laughs> How do you know? Trust me, call Venet, buy 50 million in swaps on the MBS. What do we got? Garibaldi 4 Triple B. Mark, you sure? Yeah, yeah, it's time to call. On what? Everything. 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 This is so great. So, what just happened there was that. The mortgage brokers are able to spin a house. Well, they're able to finance a house for a woman that doesn't have a solid job and who is in fact going to just tell them whatever they want to hear in terms of her actual annual income. Um, and they don't care what she tells them. This is classically known as a liar loan. They don't care what she tells them because the big banks and what they don't really say there is actually the government supported big banks, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, were buying everything, everything that, that could be sold. And the reason those guys got in the business is because back in the 90s, under Bill Clinton, they saw that banks were redlining specific areas of the city and refusing to lend money to any homes that were in that area. This is very famously the racial redlining that has been going on. And so under Clinton administration, they went after all these banks and said, if you don't lend to inside those redlined areas, then we will accuse you of racism. You're guilty by just what you're not doing and we'll charge you $500,000 a day until you do it. Now, since you may be reluctant to do that because those borrowers who are borrowing for homes in that area may not be as prime borrowers as you want to lend to, we will buy the loans from you. We will set up uh, an organization that will buy those loans and that gets the loan out of your bank and you're good to go. And what they did <clears throat> there is plant the unintended consequences 
of mortgage brokers like those two guys who are going to just do liar loans as fast as they can create them for people that don't really have real jobs. And what the, what kept the whole game going is the more people that learned how to do this, the more money that was available because they would sell these off to Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, they would get more money and lend it out the next day and more money and lend it out the next day. And it was accelerating the amount of money that was out there buying these houses. And then Mark Baum went to Las Vegas and just found, I actually, I don't think Mark Baum actually went to Las Vegas. I think it was a couple guys from Berkeley that went to Las Vegas and figured this out. But you know, you gotta make a movie that holds together. So bottom line is Deutsche Bank figured out that most of these loans were liar loans and that these subprime mortgages were going to fail. And when they did, the bonds that were based on those mortgages would fail. And then there would be this total financial collapse. And so what they did is found a way to short that. And we won't get all into the mechanics of that, um, except that what's one of my favorite things that ever happened is that this crazy wild man um, named Michael Burry, who started his own hedge fund while he was going to med school at Stanford, all right? He's fairly smart and ADHD like crazy. And he figured out that he wanted to short these bonds and go watch the big short to watch what he basically did. But I'll, I'll summarize it here. He went to Goldman Sachs and got them to provide an insurance policy. If the bonds failed, they would pay off. And Goldman was like, sure, we'll do that. That's the stupidest thing we ever heard. And they took his money for years. It took years before that thing collapsed. Um, and when it did, you know, Goldman had already figured out that it was going to collapse and it shoved off all of that risk to other brokerage firms. So those are, again, an example of the big guys messing with the big guys. So this is phenomenal. This is an example of how a bubble gets created and what happens at the end of it, at the end where the where Mark Baum is saying, OK, now we're at the end of the bubble. That happens because little guys who know nothing about what they're doing or the potential consequences of what they're doing are avid buyers of that thing. All right. And that is where we're getting rapidly here as we run into things like a Reddit group that's avidly buying GameStop or avidly buying AMC Corporation or avidly buying Silver. Just a bunch of those people have no idea what could possibly happen. And the, as far as I can tell, the only redeeming quality of that whole group is that it looks like a lot of them just don't care. They're, they're in it for the fun of it. Roll the dice, rock and roll, and let's see what happens. Well, what happens inevitably when you create bubbles is that someone, typically those with the least amount of knowledge, get burned. And that'll be some little guys that are jumping onto Reddit right now and starting to watch what's going on out there and move in on some of these stocks while the Reddit guys, who are relatively sophisticated, are busy getting out. Are busy getting out. All right, so now I'd like to hear from you guys. Um, I think that we're at a place where, you know, we should have a lot of comments about this. Are we there with the real estate market again? I mean, is the tools of the real estate market destruction already out there? Are we there with the stock market already? Um, will we continue to have low interest rates, which would, if we don't, change everything for real estate and the stock market. So we'll see how things shake out. Rule one investors are sitting here, hanging out, waiting patiently over on the sidelines, predominantly ready to take advantage of what's coming down the road. All right. Now I'd love to hear from you guys. Are there any other movies I need to be watching to dive into for future videos? That'd be fun to do. Um, just leave a comment below with your answer. I'll be sure to follow up with you. Thanks for watching, you guys. Now go play. Guys, if you enjoyed the video and you think it was valuable in teaching you more about bubbles and particularly housing bubbles and how smart people play them and how dumb people play them, hit the like button and please share this video with your friends. And if you want more investing content, just subscribe to my channel. Um, don't forget to click the button. We got a free gift there for you. And thanks again for watching.